Hey there, uh, my name is Mira Vergei and this year I was lucky enough to receive the Amelia Earhart Fellowship from Zons International. Um, first, a little bit about me. I completed my aerospace engineering bachelor and master's degree at the Delft University of Technology. And as part of my master's degree, I spent one semester at the Colorado uh, Center for Astrodynamics Research, which really sparked my interest in, in research. Um, and after a very brief moment working as a software engineer, I, uh, I moved to Glasgow uh, to do my PhD at the University of Glasgow. Uh, my PhD is on integrating trajectory optimization and economic modeling for asteroid mining missions. Well, maybe choose aerospace engineering. Well, it's not really a very glamorous answer, I'm afraid. Uh, I have always really liked STEM courses, and especially because my teachers for those subjects in high school uh, were so passionate and supportive, and they always encouraged me to excel. And at some point, uh, I thought I had made up my mind and I wanted to become a pilot, uh, which in hindsight is a little bit weird because I'd never been on a plane at the time. Um, a counselor at school uh, once suggested that I check out uh, the Delft University of Technology to uh, study aerospace engineering uh, because she knew how much I enjoyed the STEM courses. Um, and since then, I have never really looked back. Uh, my dream to become a pilot quickly vanished uh, when I found out that I enjoyed the space courses a lot more than the aviation courses. Uh, and the fact that I've already spent nearly a decade uh, studying this topic means that I should really go back to that counselor and thank her again for her truly excellent advice. Issues in my career because I'm a woman. Well, usually I don't, it doesn't even occur to me that I am a woman uh, working in a field that is dominated by men, uh, probably because I am so used to it after all of these years, uh, but also because most people don't really make a big deal out of it. And why would they? I mean, it shouldn't even be worth noting. Um, it's actually mostly people outside aerospace engineering who seem to find it necessary to point out Oh, so you study aerospace engineering as a girl? I'm not sure why. Um, anyways, there are definitely positive sides to being a woman in aerospace engineering. Uh, first of all, this fellowship. Um, and I've also been lucky enough to receive a travel grant from uh, Women in Aerospace, which is, well, only available to women in aerospace engineering. And uh, whether me being a woman uh, had anything to do with it, I don't know. But I also went to the IAC in Adelaide as part of a small group that was sponsored by ESA. And there was a very surprising female to male ratio there. Um, I also do believe that the chances for some opportunities increase when you're a woman in this field, uh, because many organizations are aiming to attract more women to their workforce. Um, ESA even includes um, applications from women are encouraged on all of their vacancies. And whether it actually helps women lend a job, I obviously can't say, but it does make me feel really hopeful. Have I doubted I would reach my goals? Well, every day. <laughs> uh, but that has nothing to do with being a woman in this field, but it has uh, more to do with the imposter syndrome, which is, I guess is not uncommon in the academic community. Uh, but since figuring out that there is a name for how I felt, it has been easier to accept when good things happen. Um, also, when I now look at my CV as if, it, as if it were someone else's, I can feel really proud of what I have achieved. Uh, but the doubt will never stay really that far away. And that is something that I have been working on, uh, supported by great supervisors and mentors. And this fellowship is a piece of the puzzle to put all of that behind me. How did I learn about the Amelia Earhart Fellowship? Um, well, two years before I was awarded the fellowship, another PhD researcher at my university won the fellowship. Uh, she encouraged me to apply, but last year I just held off on doing so because I didn't think I would stand a chance. Um, she was always surrounded by sheets of paper with the most complex looking equations I've ever seen. And she's objectively, you know, an all round genius. Uh, but lucky for me, she's also really persistent and she kept asking again and again until I sent in my application for this year's fellowships. And I'm, I'm really glad she did that. What I know about Zonza International, I know that for over one century, Zonza has been advocating for gender equality, um, envisioning a world where no woman lives in fear of violence uh, without child marriages and where each and every person has access to education, especially girls and, and women, because it's so, so important. 
Uh, and Zonta works to realize their vision that every woman is able to achieve their full potential. Uh, a lot has changed already in, in that century, but there are still ways to go. Um, I also know that there are Zonta districts and groups all over the world who are empowering women globally. And I honestly can't wait to be part of such a wonderful group of people. How I will use the fellowship. Well, if you had asked me that question two years ago, the answer would have been very different from the current answer. I would have envisioned going um, to all the conferences I wish to attend. So we wouldn't have to choose which conference I could spend my very limited funding on. Uh, my own funding allows for basically just one conference and maybe two if I'm really frugal enough. Um, also, I would have been able to go uh, on a research visit to a research institute somewhere, such as maybe the Colorado School of Mines, if they would agree on having me, uh, without having to worry about securing funding for such a really expensive undertaking. Um, all of these things would have been well, contributing immensely to my PhD and the network activities. Um, but alas, the world has changed a bit. Uh, also, I did receive the fellowship two years ago. I received it now. Um, so now I will be using the fellowship first for a much needed upgrade to my home office to create an ergonomic workplace. And in addition, the fellowship will give me a lot more flexibility regarding finishing the PhD after the funded portion of my contract uh, will end. <laughs> plans after obtaining PhD. Uh, well, these plans have obviously changed many times over the past few years. Uh, a global pandemic and working from home have definitely changed my perspective on what, what I want to do after the PhD. Um, my research is part of the Emerging Space Technologies Group, which uh, means that we're all working on widely varying projects. Um, maybe that is really just me working on this four year long uh, project. And after this relatively long isolated period at home, I'm really longing to be part of a team again, all working towards a common goal, which preferably has a deadline that is less than four years in the future. Um, I really aim to obtain a job in industry or at a space agency, uh, after which I think it would be really great to return to the academic community so I can give back what I have received over the course of nearly a decade. And I have seen how useful it is um, to share hands-on experience and real-life examples in the classroom because it genuinely motivates students. And it would make me really happy if I could give back to the education system and inspire the future generation, especially as a female engineer. <clears throat> what would I tell young girls to encourage them to choose science and technology? Um, well, explore things that intrigue you and be really curious. If you enjoy looking at the stars at night, pick up a book about astronomy. It will make looking at the stars even more fun. Um, are you fascinated by the images of erupting volcanoes on the news? Go watch a documentary on lava. Uh, wonder why airplanes can fly, why people use vinegar to clean a bathroom, or why some phones can be charged wirelessly. Just go look it up. I mean, every day I learn something new and all of these new nuggets of information, they spark other interests. And I can tell you that it is even more fun to study STEM subjects uh, when you know why you're learning all of these things, uh, when you know which applications they are useful for. So now you're no longer just learning how to do maths. You're learning the tools you can use to predict the weather. And you're no longer just learning chemistry. You're learning the tools you can use to create a vaccine. And surely there is something out there that intrigues you. And just go learn. Um, Go, go learn the tools to find out more. Anything else I'd like to add? Well, I think just my heartfelt thanks to the Zunt International Organization for selecting me for this fellowship because it really, really means a lot.